Would you like to have a life without guilt, fear, and shame? How about tapping into the supernatural in the area of freedom? Learning to live as though you are supernaturally free. Well, my guest today has written a book that is going to take us into the places of learning to walk in supernatural freedom. Stay tuned and you're going to have the answers to all of your questions in just one moment. Welcome to the Glory Road Television Show. I'm your host, Dr. Candice Smitherman, and my guest today is straight from Australia. Yes, Brisbane, Australia, Glory City Church, Pastor Catherine Runala, and I'm so excited to have her. She's a healing evangelist, revivalist. She's a pastor, author. She has her own television show on Daystar, and so it's wonderful to have her today because she's going to talk to us about super natural freedom. And so let's have Catherine join us. Hi, Catherine. Hey, it's so wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm super excited because you and I are like kindred spirits. I read your book and I was just moved. I was like, oh my gosh, I could have written this. And I have written books that are like this. So when I read it, I was like, this is so awesome. This is going to help people get supernaturally free. I mean, the, the places that you're taking them to. So I cannot wait to talk to you about how the Lord just prompted you to write this and because it is pretty detailed so you had to get into some spaces with him in order to bring that about so share that with us uh it's so wonderful to be able to talk about it because I'm all about application in that we can know so much Solomon knew so much but without application we don't get to enjoy the privilege of what it looks like to live in that freedom for freedom we've been set free praise god Amen. But, you know i really i really wanted people to know what it felt like and looked like to actually live free from fear free from guilt free from shame to free from that sense of condemnation that makes them feel like they're not measuring up they're just not enough and you know people with good hearts so often live every day with the weight of a sense of not being good enough, not measuring up and and missing the beautiful revelation of justification by faith and what that actually means for them in a practical way every day. That by faith, I can actually see myself righteous and holy because as I've given my sin to him, as I've confessed my sin, I've received the grace of God. I've received the forgiveness of Christ. And now faith pleases him. The Bible tells us that even if our heart condemns us, he's greater than our hearts. So we need to let our hearts and our thoughts line up with what he's actually given us. And that is the righteousness of God in Christ. And that can sound like a whole lot of theory. But when people actually start to to let that sink in, then as they wake up in the morning and begin to look in the mirror of his face, we're reminded, ah, what does God look like? God is love. Love is patient. Patience personified. James chapter 1 says, if any man's a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's because he's like a man that looked at his natural face in the mirror and then walked away and forgot what he looked like. So God wants us to look in the mirror of who he is so that we can remember what we look like. And when I look at him, I realize, wow, he is patience personified. So today I reckon myself dead indeed to sin and alive to God in Christ. I, I've, I've made, got my life right with him. I've repented and received the mercy of God. So today I'm going to look at myself and say, Lord, I, you say now that I look like you. So you're patient. Therefore, I put on the superpower of patience today. I'm not going to try and be patient. I'm going to agree with you that now it's no longer me who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Therefore, I am patient. 
I am kindness personified. And when we believe that, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And as we understand this identity, we're actually empowered to live it out. Instead of coming from a, a, um, a, a deficit of thinking, well, I'm just not good enough, but I'm going to try. The heart of God is for us to really recognize and understand the reality of what it looks like to have a new identity in Christ. And when we believe that, then we can actually, by faith, walk it out. And it's, it's glorious. And I want people to be able to wake up free, actually happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Do you guys feel the happiness and the joy when you watch her bring forth the word? She loves God so much, and you can see it all over her. And so it's contagious. So I can, like, feel it coming through your love for God and how it's pouring out on those people that are watching. And I know people are thinking to themselves, oh, I want to love God like that. I want, you know, what she has. I want to know um, what it's like to um, be in the glory and be in the presence of God. And, you know, Catherine, you and I both know that that starts only by understanding we died with Christ, we are buried with Him, and we are resurrected in Him. That is the only only way you can get to that place of releasing heaven, releasing the glory of God um, into atmospheres is being able to live from that place. I don't care with me, carry with me fear, anxiety, depression. I do not carry it with me because I have, uh, when I die with Christ, I left that behind. That That is yesterday. So I don't need that anymore. I, it's not a part of who I am. And I love what you're saying in this book because you're helping people raise up in their identity. You're helping Helping them see that this is who you are, and if this is who you are, then that baggage can't come with you. That's so true. But so often we let the little foxes spoil the vine. In that, I think about it like my my iPhone. You know, if I um, open apps, they just keep ticking away in the background. But it's not until I actually shut them down that they stop hanging around there and wasting the battery. And in the same way, I have to take captive every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. That is, every thought I have about myself that doesn't line up with who he is. So if I'm defining myself by my failures and I say, oh, I'm lazy or I'm selfish or I'm not very spiritual, they are thoughts that are exalting themselves against the knowledge of who Christ is. And the Bible says, it's no longer me who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So I need to recognize that, not just ignore it, but actually recognize it and go, oh, I see you. That's a lie. I'm going to catch you, cast you down and replace it with truth. So when my heart says, oh, you're lazy or you're not very spiritual or you're a hypocrite, I go, okay, have I done anything that I haven't brought to the Lord? All right, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have felt that. But I give that to you. Thank you, Lord. So I cast down that. Oof. That's not true about me. What's true about me? Well, what's true about you? You're my mirror. Ha, ah, you're holy. You have pure motives. You're glorious. You're, you're totally righteous and holy. And therefore, so am I. Mm, what does it feel like to be not guilty? What does it feel like to be as holy as God, as righteous as God? You know, that almost sounds like blasphemy to people, yet that is what the gospel says. And that's the heart of God, because if we're to do the works of Jesus, we can't do it out of our old identity. We need to step into that born again reality and begin to believe him today uh, so that we don't forget what has happened to us, but we intentionally every day reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin and alive to God in Christ, and put off the things that don't belong anymore, and put on, clothe ourselves with these new superpowers that we've been given, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. I'm not trying to be humble or gentle uh, and putting it over an old, ugly me. That person has died. Hallelujah. Okay. I don't have to try to make her die. It's not done by my spirituality or my works. 
by faith, I agree with you. Thank you, God. You set me free from me. Hooray. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's a, it's a great way to live. And it's, it's the only way to live in, in true freedom. Otherwise, we're always fighting this heaviness and these lies and these fears. That if people only really knew what I was like, you know. And, and, and it's an ugly thing that the enemy tries to um, sap people's joy and the joy of their salvation with even things that are dressed up as being religious and holy, yet are actually lies. Yeah, come on, come on. That That's a true word right there. You know, when you were speaking out about grabbing those lies, I just felt in the spirit that we should walk some people through grabbing those lies. And so I'd really love for you um, to really just do it right now because we're like in the moment right now. You know, we'll, we'll finish the interview. But let's walk people through when it's like to grab a hold of those lies. So those of you that are watching right now, I want you to, uh, for a second, think about, um, it's not going to be hard because negativity always surrounds us. So think about some of the things you've experienced today that have been negative or heavy on you. And um, take those things and let's let Catherine walk us through getting rid of those so that you can be free in this moment. Okay, go for it, Catherine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, First John 3 tells us that even if our hearts condemn us, he's greater than our hearts. So even if you feel like, oh, I feel, I feel like a hypocrite or I haven't prayed very much mm -hmm. or, or, you know, I had a bad attitude yesterday. Yes, they were wrong things, but they are not the truth about you anymore. So as you've repented of that, I've said, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have had that bad attitude. Oh, God, I, I really, I, I haven't been stewarding my life well. I'm sorry. God looks at you and he says, I don't even remember your sins anymore. And look at them. Angels, look at her. She's beautiful. So right now, why don't you take a moment and look in the mirror of God's face and begin to think about what he looks like. And if there's any thoughts that you're having about yourself, having given your life to Christ and repented of your sin and received his mercy, now have a think about how do you feel about yourself? Oh, I feel like a hypocrite. Well, is Jesus a hypocrite? No. So let's grab that thought, cast it down. That's not true about me. What is true about me? Well, what's true about Jesus? He is love. Love is patient. Okay, so I'm going to put on that reality. Ah, hallelujah. I am patient. I'm patience personified. So what's it going to look like for my family when they talk to me next? We're going to run into patience personified. They're going to run into kindness personified. So I, I'm putting on kindness. That means the next person I talk to is actually going to experience the atmosphere of heaven. They're going to experience the acceptance of Christ. Jesus isn't judgmental and critical. Thank you, God. When I look at people, I look at them and love them because that's what Jesus does. When I, when I look at people, they'll feel the love of Christ because I am love because it's no longer me who, who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. Therefore, I am love personified. And that, and that means that all of my interactions are going to be saturated and flowing, not from Catherine trying to be loving, but from Catherine, who is loving because Christ, the Lord God himself now, has possessed me and lives inside of me. And it's no longer me who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So can you imagine yourself right now? Use your sanctified imagination. What is it going to look like when you talk to people today and you are mercy and kindness personified? When you look at someone or you interact with someone that's cranky or angry, Imagine what it's going to look like as you just respond with gentleness and kindness <laughs> and grace and love because you haven't got anger inside of you. You haven't got um, at selfishness or uh, insecurity on the inside. You are rooted and grounded in love because that's who he is. You are loved by the Father and therefore just as you are sitting under the spout of his pleasure for you. You take pleasure in other people. You can look at them and see uh, the apple of God's eye, people who are utterly loved and deeply treasured. And people, when they get around you, are going to feel and experience 
this deep acceptance of Jesus. They're going to want to be around you because you're so full of the love of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I can tell you right now, things are falling off of people. Just as they're thinking about the fact that, wow, that can really be my life. Yes, that can really be your life. But we have a joke at my church. People always say, Oh, Pastor Candace, she's in the third heaven. Just leave her there, you know, because I'm always like, you know, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, God loves you and don't worry about it. And they're like, Pastor Candace, I don't understand, you know, how come you can, you're, you're seeing it that way. And I'm like, because I'm resurrected in him. I am resurrected in him. That's my position. I know all of this is confusing and it's difficult and I can honor that. But I know where I'm seated, and I want you to join me in that place. And when you do, all that stuff is going to fall off of you. So the people today, they need to know how to get your book because your book is very scripturally grounded, okay? So as you all are watching this program, this isn't two women that just love Jesus and are in this place of totally living in heaven. Yes, we might, but I can tell you right now, we both have stories that brought us to this place. That's and those true. stories mean we are overcomers. We overcame fear, anxiety, depression, shame, guilt, condemnation, lies. We have been overcomers. So we're not talking from a place that people can't go to. We know what it's like to overcome. And so this has become a foundation for us. The enemy is under our feet and we are at a level now where we have been able to grab every lie and cast it down. And we know who we are and that's greater. Who we are and who is in us is greater than who's in the world and what's going on around us. So you can get there too. This is a word of encouragement. You can get there too. And I want you to get Catherine's book. So let me put that up. Here's her book. And you can order hers at her website, katherinerenala.org. Or any, .com. I'm sorry, .com. .com. Well, it says .org on the slide. So ignore that. Sorry. .com or any major bookseller. Okay, so go to any major bookseller. And, um, and grab a hold of that because I want you to learn all about supernatural freedom. And the reason I like Catherine's book, like I said, is very grounded in the word. The only way you're going to change is if you renew your mind and you get yourself in the word of God and you begin to start studying. But she's taking you through some really practical chapters to get to this place of supernatural freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pastor Candice, that's uh, such a joy because I, I wrote this with um, my desire to really see people live it out. A lot of people know about the reality of we're justified by, by grace, by faith, through grace. It's by grace I'm saved through faith, not of works. And we could quote these things and we can, um, we can know it. We can have memory verses. If, I mean, at church at the moment, we're having a Bible revival, hashtag Bible revival, and getting everyone to memorize the Word. And we love the Word of God. But if the Word isn't actually applied in a practical way, then we don't experience the fullness of what God's got for us. So my heart is that people would really learn what it looks like to live free from sin, free from shame, free from guilt, free from fear, to actually not have anxiety bubbling around uh, in the background and trying to survive with it, but actually getting free, living free in genuine peace and joy. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But peace and joy flow from knowing I've been forgiven. But by believing that we're righteous, we then have power to apply the righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's practiced righteousness. It's applied righteousness that we've received. So instead of trying to be a good person, when I believe I'm a good person, then I behave like a good person. When I believe that I'm pure, then I behave as one that is pure. I, I used to be so full of insecurity. Mm -hmm. I was my, my harshest critic. And the truth is, 
when you're a critic of yourself with the same measure that you use towards yourself, you use toward everybody else. Mm -hmm. So in your head, you'll be judging everybody else. Yes. But so the, the, the key came for me when I really started to let the love of God overwhelm me and undo me. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21 was my life-changing passage. I began to pray that apostolic prayer, personalize it for myself, and begin to ask God, I want you to strengthen me with might in my inner being so that I can truly come to know, together with all the saints, Christ dwelling in my heart through faith, that I would be rooted and grounded in love. I'd know this love that passes knowledge and be filled up continually to overflowing with all the fullness of God. And I, I prayed that every day for three months, personalizing it. And I came from a background of abuse and rejection and abandonment, and I was so insecure. But his perfect love came in and displaced that insecurity. And he began to say, you're not ugly, you're not stupid, you're not uh, messed up and impure. You are holy, you are loved, you're righteous, you're delightful, you're, you're beautiful, you're holy. And as you start to believe that and let him... You need to look every day in his face and hear that because the world will tell you all sorts of other things. But when you start to believe that, then you start to manifest that because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What I believe is what I will manifest. Hallelujah. So that's what changed my life. The love of God will change your life too. Hallelujah. You know, I know this is ministering to some people right now, you know, and I, and, and I know this is two women on this broadcast, but this goes for men too. You know, men, Absolutely. you know, Jesus wants to look you in the face and tell you how much he loves you, how proud he is of you. He knows how hard you're working, how much you're trying to provide for your family, um, all the weights that you carry with you, wanting to make sure that your kids grow up right, you know, and that, that um, you know, you're excelling in your job, all of the things uh, that um, are driving you today, whatever that is, he just wants to look at you and, and want you to look at him and say, I love you, son. I love you just as you are right there, right, exactly like you're at, like you are today, okay, not working so hard, but just being the person that I created you to be, and so I just want to encourage you men today that all this that Catherine is speaking from the Supernatural Freedom Book is for you too as well, it is scriptural, it's for all of us, um, the Apostle Paul wrote to males and females. He wanted us both to understand our righteousness in Christ. You know, Catherine, you were talking about insecurities, you know, and I had a lot of insecurities too. You know, I lost my father when I was a child, and um, you know, I, I lived in a lot of, of fear and, and anxiety and guilt. And um, you know, physically, my body, I had Crohn's disease um, when I was a child, and the Lord supernaturally healed me of that. But through this whole process, I learned that secure attachment to God is freedom from everything else in our life. And when we are insecure and we learn to attach to the Father, we finally become secure. And we be, finally become uh, the people that God always intended us to be. You know children uh, when they come to the daycare and they're screaming their heads off because they don't want to be separated from mom? That's actually a healthy response to one that is securely attached to its mother. And so, you know, if... If uh, someone tried to separate me from Jesus, which that can't happen because he says that nothing can separate us from the love of God, uh, nothing at all. Um, but if something tried to separate me, I'd be screaming like a crazy person because he's my total <laughs> attachment. And that's what makes me healthy and whole spirit, soul, and body is because I'm securely attached. And so I'm feeling in the spirit right now that we need to pray for people to begin to position themselves to be securely attached to God. There are people watching that are in, feel insecure. They feel weak. They're, they don't feel like they're good enough. They're working so hard, and they're not able to ever produce what it's going to take to gain love and acceptance. But God says, I love and accept you no matter what. And that's something we need to wash ourselves in. So I just want you to lead some people.
people uh, in prayer so that they can enter into that space and place uh, in relationship with God. Not, not only where they get supernatural revelation that comes from heaven that just breaks this stuff off of them, but where they physically feel the manifestation of God and connection with him and they feel his love and assurance of his love, which is secure attachment to God. So will you pray uh, for those today? I'd love to. Father, I thank you for your deep love for each and every one watching right now. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you bring revelation light. In your light, we see light. Help them to recognize that any thought they have about themselves that isn't true about you needs to be taken captive, uh, cast down and replaced with truth. Lord, I break off in the name of Jesus, oppression, depression and lies in the name of Jesus. I declare bondage is broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the revelation, life and truth that by your stripes we are healed, that you have delivered us. From the bondage of sin, you've delivered us from ourselves. Hallelujah. And you know, right now, if you're watching and you know in your heart you're not walking in relationship with God, God so desires relationship with you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I believe in you. Help me. I believe Jesus died and rose again, that he's the son of God. And Lord, I bring you my sin. Here it is. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord. I receive your grace. I receive your forgiveness. And he will come in and make himself new, make you new on the inside. So right now, Lord, I pray for revelation of your salvation to flood people's hearts. That those that know you, that you would help them to enter into the joy of that salvation. That salvation that set them free from them. That it's no longer they who live, but Christ who lives in them. Those that have been struggling, thinking, I've got to try and die to myself. Lord, help them recognize that they don't have to try to do it, but by faith receive the grace of uh, the reality that they're forgiven and that they've been made new. It's no longer them who lives, that they reckon themselves dead today indeed to sin and alive to God in Christ, that they put on this new man, that they put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness. Lord, I declare over them that they bear with each other. They forgive any grievances they may have against each other, that they walk in holiness. They walk in righteousness, virtue, godliness, patience, uh, love, kindness. Lord, that they keep no record of wrongs against one another. Lord, I thank you that they bear all things, hope for all things, endure all things. Lord, that their thoughts are righteous, that they have the mind of Christ, that they have the wisdom of God, that they have the, the strength and the power.